if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. At least that's what they say. There's another option. Just send in the kids. This is Behind the Shot. Hi, welcome to Behind the Shot. This is the podcast where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion, all the stories and challenges and issues that happen in between. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. A couple of reminders for you before we bring the guest in. First of all, keep in mind that we are now at a new site. We're no longer with This Week in Photo. We are at BehindTheShot.tv. So if you do any subscribing in iTunes or anything like that, make sure you go get the right iTunes link from BehindTheShot.tv. If you just search iTunes, you will still see the old show. Just want to make sure you subscribe to the new one. As well, if you'd leave us a review, that would be fantastic. And of course, you can also always follow me on Twitter and we'll give all of that stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we'll give all of that stuff out a little bit later. So the guest today, um, I don't even know where to go with describing my guest today because this this young lady shoots photography that I would never do and, and she does it in such an unusual way. I'd like to welcome to Behind the Shot, Hilmar Smith. Hilmar, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Uh, it is my pleasure to have you and I found out about you actually through Frederick Van Johnson, our mutual friend from This Week in Photo, where I, I, the show used to be. And then, since the, the short amount of time that I've heard your name, I've now seen you on uh, Rick Salmon's podcast, Picturing Success. Yeah. You've been on This Week in Photo uh, at least once, if not twice. Um, so you're kind of making the rounds. You've been on Scott Kelby's The Grid over at Kelby One, which is one of my favorite video podcasts, by the way. Not many people do video. Scott does video so brilliantly. Amazing. So let's let's talk about you a little bit. Um, okay. You are you're a photographer, but but you're more towards the creative end of, of photography and compositing and and digital artistry. Tell tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. I'll say that I'm a crappy photographer with crazy Photoshop skills. <laughs> I love photography and I love taking pictures. The thing with, with me is just like I take a picture and I just cannot post it, post it like that. I just have to, you know, change it somehow, add a little bit of magic here and there. Um, I think that Photoshop is my jam. It's, it's when I really feel creative. It's when I really feel like I'm... I'm doing my craft. I'm doing what I love. It's it's interesting to me because I know a lot of photographers who say, I love to go out shooting, but it's a chore to come back and call the images and edit and they'll do two minutes. You sound like one of those people who shooting is the chore, not the chore, but you know, shooting is the job part and Photoshop oh. is the play. Well, it's actually because um, to me is everything together. Now, if you tell me that I'm going to go and shoot um, headshots, that to me is just like, uh, because I have to edit it and, you know, it's not creative, it's just a headshot. Uh, but when I'm doing the creative work that I do, it takes a lot of planning before, you know, getting to the shoot itself because I have to know exactly what I'm getting and how I want my subjects to pose. Right. So it's it's all a process, uh, but taking the pictures is just a little part of it. So you're based in Orlando, Florida. Yes. Where are you originally from? Because clearly that's not an Orlando, Florida accent. <laughs> I'm from Venezuela. Venezuela. Okay. And yes. how long have you been in the states? Since 2006. Okay. So. Yes. In, in, in okay. <laughs> I tried really hard to come up with all these cool talking points about Hilmar. And by the way, people, if you don't know, when you go look at the post, her name is spelled with a G. I'm not mispronouncing it, and I didn't spell it wrong on the page. It's it's written as Gilmar pronounced Hilmar. Um, but I went and looked at your about page. I always love reading people's about pages. Like I don't know if you've gone and looked at Scott Kelby's about page. It's a blast to read. He talks about his favorite movies and here's here's Hilmar's about page. Okay, I'm going to read this. I'm a photographer, writer, Photoshop addict, content creator and social media junkie based in Orlando, Florida. End. One sentence and it really 
describes it, but I needed for a blog post. By the way, the blog post for this show will be at BehindTheShot.tv. It'll have a gallery of other images of hers, not just the one that we're talking about. So I, I sent her an email back saying, you know, Hilmar, could you give me a little more? I need to write an entire blog post about this. And here's what she wrote back, because I love this. This is actually creative to me. She wrote back and said, she's not a fan of writing about herself in the third person, but she's regularly asked to do so. It just rocks, just rocks. So you are regularly asked to do so. You do do some writing. List for me some of the sites, well-known sites, by the way, that you've written for. Um, I write for Platypod Weekly. Um, they're one of my sponsors, you know, Platypod. Platypod, the they're, they're these yeah. really, I have not tried one yet. I really need to. I see Rick really? using it a lot. Who else uses one? Uh, Photo Joseph Rick. uses them. Yes, yes. Rick Simmons uses them. Everybody, Scott Calvi and whatever. So, I think I can hook you up with one. Well, I, I would love to try one. <laughs> love it. It's, it's a small plate, basically, that has yes. adjustable feet. And you can put a ball head on it. So you can pretty much mount your camera anywhere. It, Everywhere. Really, really cool. Yeah. So who else have you written for? I write for Photoshop User Magazine, for Lightroom User Magazine, and Layers Magazine. Okay. So a lot of yeah. th those are all Kelby things. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, when I was looking up what you wrote, things that you've written online, I found a 2014 guest blog post for Scott Kelby. And yeah. it was this fantastic read on inspiration. It, 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 there are two. There was that one and there was a one that was um, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So yeah. go look up both on the Scott Kelby blog because really you're an amazing writer. Um, I don't know if it's that, that thing where creativity just creates other lines. You know, creative people are creative in many ways. But your writing is really the way that you speak, right? It's very, it's just very communicative. Uh, but again, you've been around for a long time. Here's the main thing to me is just our interactions on Twitter, our interactions on email. You are an artist that has, to me, the right attitude that this industry needs. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. So that brings us up to your photograph. Now, okay. when we get into this photograph, I want to be really clear. Th kids, don't do this at home. Okay? <laughs> this shot, for those that are listening on audio, Hilmar, describe what's happening in this photo. Well, those are my two kids uh, burning down the kitchen. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Not, okay, again, they're listening on audio, my so let's be clear. Not was... really burning down the kitchen. <laughs> There is fire involved, it's in a smoky um, kitchen. But um, the whole thing for me, the whole idea was, I think that I created this by um, Mother's Day. So it was like try to imagine if my kids tried to cook something for me for breakfast or something for Mother's Day. And that will be something that will happen for real. It, it, the shot based on looking at the, the, the image that you sent me is Master Chef Kids. Yes. And I should point out that this is obviously a composite. There's two kids, one younger child sitting on the counter with the most uh, <laughs> almost like evil planning smile and a chef's hat and a bowl. There's an older child that's at the stove with a uh, flame coming out of what looks like a wok pan, a stir fry pan. <laughs> and then also his arm is on fire. The kitchen is gorgeous. Is that your kitchen? I wish that was my kitchen, but it was actually um, a place that I used to live in the clubhouse. And I went down there one day and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a picture of this kitchen and eventually I'm going to use it in one of my composites. It's such yeah. a perfect, such a perfect I kitchen. I, I mean, absolutely it. amazing. And when you're looking at the, the image, there's also smoke in the room. So let's talk a couple of things first. It's going to be hard to describe exposure information because there's multiple shots in here. So let's go a different route. What camera okay. gear do you shoot with? <laughs> That's my favorite question. I shoot with a 5D Mark II. Mark II. Yes. Okay. Uh, is my only camera, has been the only camera I ever own, and I still shoot with it. So and you have never considered upgrading to, I don't know, a uh, 
a three, or maybe a of four? Course. But I'm a single mother of two, and I have been through hell and back in the last five years. So, you know, uh, I have my priorities, and my kids are my priorities, and I'm the only, only one that is bringing the money at home for both of them. So I shoot with what I have, you know? My camera works. My and, computer and works. And let's be honest. And, and, and these shots are a perfect example of that. The five, uh, uh, 5D Mark II clearly makes amazing, sellable images. So many people upgrade because it has a bigger number. When you don't... Of course, if I could, I would upgrade. I mean, Canon could send me cameras if they want to. But, you know, it's, I think that when you have limited resources, you get more creative. You know, that's kind of... I, I wrote a, a blog post, actually, a guest blog for Scott Kelby as well. And part of what I went through was some of the things I've, I've heard over and over again doing this show. And that's what I didn't mention in the blog post that really does come back all the time. Um, Rick Sammons mentioned it. My buddy Matthias Hombauer has mentioned it. And that is when, like, he uses manual focus lenses to shoot concert photography sometimes because wow. that, I, I know, I'm like, dude. <laughs> That's yeah. that's not that's not pushing the envelope. That's insane, but it it really can. One of the old exercises I love is telling people to take a nifty fifty, a fifty one point eight, go into a parking lot, an empty parking lot, and try and make ten really good images. That yeah. limitation can be, uh, uh, you know, really kind of cool. So let's let's break the image down a little bit, right? When yeah. you look at this image, you've got the two kids, you've got the kitchen. Yeah. You got the fire, you got all of that type stuff. The reason discussing EXIF data is tough is because as I bring up this composite kind of source image, you'll see there's actually five images in here. There's one of the older child. How old is, is your son here? Um, he's 11, he was 10. At the time? When I, yes. Okay, great I facial did. expression. He is my little angel. Um, he is in the autism spectrum and we have used photography as a way for us to bond and to create things together. And he absolutely loves taking these kind of pictures. So I always tell him, hey, this is what we're going to do or we, you know, make the concept together. And he goes and practice in front of the mirror. <laughs> well, and I was going to say his facial expression yes. is, is great acting. It really is. Now, yeah. it looks like you dirtied his face. Did you did you dirty his face to make it look better? I did that in Photoshop. Really? Yes. Wow, that's a great makeup job. I thought you had manually dirtied his face. Now, the baby sitting on the I counter. Think, well, I don't know if I did it in Photoshop or if I did it in, in beforehand, though. Okay. How old was know. the baby um, here? She was one and a half, two years old. Okay. She's Again, really great face, <laughs> clearly loves it. Um, yeah. There's then there's two clips, you know, there's the kitchen, which we already talked about, which I wish it was mine, too. And then there's the two pieces of fire. Where did oh, you get the fire? fire have stories. Uh, that was a few years ago that Von Guan, Benjamin Von Guan, he came to Orlando um, and it was when he recorded the video for Smokebox. So I hung out with him for a few days and one of the nights that we were hanging out, there was like a fire breathing potty. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously I didn't do it because I'm a chicken, but it was like this party with a bunch of people just breathing fire. And I was just there shooting and shooting and shooting. And then when I, I thought about this picture, I was like, I have some fire pictures. And I went and looked those up and those were the ones. Now, so I did used. you take the, these fire pictures? Or yes. are, okay, so both the fires you took as well. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so that brings us then back to the, the final image because there's one thing in the image that was not in the, the source images, the smoke. Uh -huh. Where'd the smoke come from? Smoke brushes, Photoshop smoke brushes. You can find any kind of brushes <laughs> online. You can oh, buy them. Okay. And you can even make them yourself. Like if you take pictures of, of um, clouds, you can build your own um, Photoshop brushes. Raw Exchange also has stuff like that that they sell. Yes. And they have they some have they, amazing stuff. Raw Exchange's stuff. They have they have flower ones where they threw flower and really? that are the am and stuff? amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think I have some of their stuff too. I, yeah. I just 
I just because that's that's my jam. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I got to tell you, one of the things I love about this image is the actual composite skill here, right? The Thanks. the way that the smoke is blended in, the look on the faces, the way the fire is coming out of the pan, the lighting and dodging and burning. I mean, now that we've seen the source image on that kitchen, where you put the light in the image is fantastic. So I have a couple of questions because obviously you assembled this. So when un unlike staging a picture, right, you mm -hmm. had the choice to position things to yes. make sure that the baby was so close to the edge that the chef's hat was cropped, that the the stir fry <laughs> pan was slightly cut off on on the right hand side. There were there were very clearly intentional um, compositional choices in this image. What were you thinking as you were positioning the boys, the fire? What 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 was going through your head? Let me see because I think that I can find I believe I this is my sketching book. <laughs> and if I show it to you, it's gonna be super funny because I have pictures and I have notes of everything that I do. You storyboard I, your shots. Yes, I do a sketch really? of every single one of them. So that way it's easier for my kids and I. Like especially for my little girl, um, it's harder, but for my boy, we sketch these together. And I'm pretty sure that I sketched that one. So we knew because if you look at the raw pictures of the kids, um, you can see that I put the lights in a certain way because I knew where the fire is going to come from. And you can see that they were taken with um, orange gels. See, and that's a key point because yes. I was talking with Renee Robin once about how people go out sometimes and they shoot all these clouds but or these background scenes, but they don't think about when they shoot their model having the light on the model match the light direction in the background they're going to drop it in so yes. you by sketching it out by storyboarding it like a movie director would you knew yes. fire is going to be here their face could help if it starts a little bit orange put a gel on have mm -hmm. them look this way but still the baby's hat is fully there and the stir fry pan is fully there so <laughs> as you're composing this and deciding on the crop are you thinking in your head um, rule of thirds? Are you, are you thinking, I want this thing to explode out of the frame a little bit? What made you cut those off? Because you could have easily still left those in completely. What was the energy idea behind it? Well, you have to look at perspective. You have to look um, the way that she was sitting, like in the raw um, image that I gave you of my daughter. You can see that she was sitting on a bench. So um, I knew that I was going to sit her in that counter. So and I knew the little space that I had. So I had to tilt it a little bit. OK, I knew that if I get her a small, a smaller, um, it wasn't going to look real. So um, that was the room that I had. And if I had to crop to crop a little bit, sometimes when you when you put everything inside and you don't crop like some sides of, of the picture, it doesn't look real because it's, it looks like you're cramping everything. Right. Just to just to make it, you know, feed everything together um here you I were able to give it the space that it needed yes. and almost have it as though the the viewer the, it's one of my favorite actually ways of doing composition you you give the viewer a feel like they're looking through a window into a real world exactly exactly yes one thing i noticed there's catch lights in their eyes did you do that in post or was it an off-camera flash uh, there was the camera flash. There was my. They were my strokes. The ones that I used with the with the gels. Okay, so there. That brings in the next question. How many on these shots? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I had uh, one behind him and one from um, under him, just to make the light from the from the fire from the pen. So are these are I these speed lights or are they full studio strokes? Strokes. Strokes. What do you shoot? Do you know? Uh, Ellen Crumb. Ellen Crumb. I have, yes, I have had them for like since okay. 2000. Thank so you. now here's the question I've been dying to ask. Okay. You've got all of these images, and let's let's okay. really focus on the kitchen and, and the the two kids, right? You really like the kitchen. There's, I, I know, <laughs> you and me both. I just want to cook in it one time. Come on. I know, right? Um, I, you know what? I'll even just microwave in it, and I'll be happy. Yeah. When you've got these these three images, the kitchen and the two kids, 
choices need to be made of where the editing happens. So some people would take child one, post process that image to a point, do the same with the other two. Then when you composite it, you then do the, the editing and post-production again together to blend them. Do you do some post-production on each individual image before the composite, or do you just bring them in as layers and do all the work within one Photoshop document? I do everything in one Photoshop document and I separate them on groups. Like one group is my daughter, another group is my son. And, and you know, because that way um, it allows me to make adjustment if I need to. Okay, so, so what's your workflow? You shoot this, you sit down at the computer, What's your import edit workflow? Well, I do a little bit of adjustment. Like um, I knew from the beginning, the first image that I was going to, that, that started all of this concept was the kitchen because I really needed to use that kitchen. So um, I knew where I was going to put them. I did a little bit of adjustment on the kitchen on Lightroom before um, taking it to Photoshop. And then I just put each one of them together where I need them to go. And then I started like adding shadows and dodging and burning and doing the the smoke and moving the fire around until, you know, it was in the right position. Because as you can see, um, you can see the highlight that he has on his arm. Yeah. And that because I was thinking that I was going to put the fire on the on the on the stove. So you make all the adjustments needed so it looks real. And in order to do that, I think that you have to do everything in one document because as you keep moving and you get off your chair and you walk around and then you sit back in front of your computer, you start picking up things that don't look right. So you always have to work on destructively. And right. That makes sense. To, yes. but, but it also just brought in, when you brought up, you knew the fire was going to go there. It brought yes. in another question when I look at the source images, right? Your daughter is sitting on a bench. Yes. But your son is standing and has a shadow behind him in the source image. Uh -huh. So you had to cut all of this out. When you go yes. to cut this out in Photoshop, are you mm -hmm. one of those people to really zoom in to 800% and make this crazy mask? What do you what do you use for cutting out? The pen tool is the best thing. I, it took me forever to start using the pen tool because I was terrified and I tried a few times and I was like, this is so complicated. <laughs> and then I and and I finally, yes. And I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to make you my the ads. <laughs> you know, I started working on it and I love it. And it's the best way is super fast after you learn how to use it. And it's perfect. It makes the perfect spot out. So you get it all together. But yes. then you get this really killer grunge look. What, <laughs> what, what do you do in post to get the look that you've got in this image? You know, you always have the idea, like I usually have an idea of, of the colors and what I want it to look like, but sometimes you don't know how, it's, how you're gonna make it happen. So I'm gonna be pretty honest with you. I just go and start trying things here and there and delete a few layers and then start over and, and you know, until I get the colors right and whatever. I think that I um, color graded this one and I added a little bit of con contrast and dodge and burn and then I took it to Nick. Um, color Nick effects Pro? Yes. And, and I think that I added like tonal contrast or something like that okay. at the end of it. I love yeah. tonal. Nick is still my favorite. I love tonal yes. contrast and actually pro <laughs> contrast. I like too. But when you when you start doing color grading in Photoshop, are you one to use uh, adjustment layers, curves, adjustment layers, and adjust colors that way? Or are you using hue I saturation use a and adjustment bit layers? Of everything. Uh, I I use color balance. I use I use um, I use I use levels. I use. Um, Curves and now I don't know if you have heard about uh, about it. Uh, Pratik Naik, he came up with this uh, Photoshop panel that is called Infinite in, Infinite Color Panel. Really? And it is yes. And I was able I review it for Photoshop User Magazine, so I got to use it before everybody. And it's just like the best tool ever to color grade. 
it's just beautiful and you just it's just like you're playing um in a slot machine in vegas and you just press this button and it changes the looks and you can stack them and and play around with it it's very addictive can you send me a link to that yes and i'll include it in the show notes on the blog post that would be fantastic so here's the big thing somebody Uh wants to follow in your footsteps not so much in the compositing but to work with kids (laughs) So, which arguably some people would say is even harder. So what is your, what is your one tip a for photographers working with kids and two to get into the composite world? Well, I think that one of the most amazing things about kid is their imagination. So when I work in these kind of images that are my favorite ones to do is um, all about making them my creative directors. So when the, if they're older than five years old, you sit with them and, and ask them about what they like and, and you know, and start sketching and, and letting, letting them know that they are in charge. And after you sketch and you let them create a story, when you have them in front of the camera, they already know what they're supposed to do because it's their project. They're so invested. I, yes, they're invested. And the best part of it is like at the end, since you sketch everything together, you did something for them. And since you did something for them, it's an image that is gonna, you know, reflect who they were at that stage of their life. And that's the beauty of doing this kind of work. Uh, I love it. And you've done such a nice job. And and we're gonna put your website up here in just a second, but people seriously go look at her portfolio because you have a number of shots with your kids. Yes. in different scenarios that are really, really cool, but you've also just got this really wide range of types of composite images. We were talking in the green room before we started uh, that you've got the the walking the phones image, <laughs> which is somebody who's gonna be on the show as well. Uh, I've already recorded him at the time that you're recording, that, that we're recording this, Kirk Marsh, who is an actual clown. The guy's an yeah. actual clown. He worked for Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. That episode is coming up. Uh, might air before this one. I'm not quite sure yet, but watch for that. Yeah. But you got to go look at Hilmar's work because it's it's absolutely amazing. So Hilmar, if people want to find you, what is your website? www.hilmar with <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced like an H, but it's actually it spells G I L M A R Smith. Everybody knows how to spell Smith. Photography.com. So it's hilmarphotography.com. So the, the Smith is not in there. It's just hilmarphotography.com. Hilmarphotography.com. Okay. Yes. And then you're also on Facebook. Yes, as Hilmar Smith. And Instagram, that is my favorite uh, platform. And, in and I do Instagram, a lot of you're Hil- Yeah, Instagram, it's Hilmar Smith. Twitter and Facebook, there's an M in the middle. Yes. Yeah, there we go. And yeah. I put them up on screen so that'll make it easier for everybody uh, you know, to find Thank you, you. And, and love all of the work that you do. So <laughs> is there anything you got coming up that people should know about or watch for? Um, oh, I wish I could say. Oh, but, so yes, um, there is. <laughs> yes, there is something that I'm working on. Uh, and I'm Oh, actually now you're getting... killing me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's secret. I cannot talk about it. I actually have a meeting. Um, it was going to be on Thursday, but we move it to Monday. And I'm going to have a meeting in Tampa. So I'm working on a really exciting project that hopefully I will bring to you soon. Well, I, I look forward to it. And everybody follow her. She's active on Twitter. She's active on Instagram. She's active on Facebook. Go check out her portfolio. And Hilmar, th- thank you so, so much for coming by. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It has been an absolute joy. Oh, and by the way, again, I don't want to forget because we did talk about him, but you are on the the latest Picturing Success podcast uh, done by Larry Becker and and our friend Rick Salmon. And great podcast. I was episode number seven, I think. Um, And he's just, they get. A, it's not just photographers, right? They get mostly photographers, but it's a, people from all kinds of creative worlds coming together and discuss discussing their industry and success, and it's a fantastic podcast. So again, yeah. Hilmar, thank you so much for coming by. Really appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this show. couple things just to remind you of. There will be 
a blog post associated with this episode. Again, behindtheshot.tv is where you can find it. You'll find information about Hilmar. You'll find all of her links. You'll find ways to reach out to her on social media, etc. Make sure you go check that out. While you're there, I now have not only the video feed, but I have an audio feed for this program as well. All the subscribe links are on the right-hand side of the page on every page at behindtheshot.tv. And again, please drop us an iTunes review, not just a rating, but a rating is great too, but a rating and a review, it would be very, very much appreciated. If you want to follow me, I am on Facebook. It's Steve Brazel Photography on Facebook. So head on up there and I'm active there. You can always message me there. One of my favorites, same as Hilmar, Instagram, love it. Instagram and Twitter, it's uh, just at Steve Brazel, spelled the same as the country Brazil, but two L's. And then, of course, my website is stevebrazel.com, also behind the shot.tv. To everybody, thanks for joining us. Make sure you come by next time as we try and get inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. Oh, my God.